Thanks for being with us, guys. Um, it's good to be back with our team. Uh, yesterday was our, our first day. We've gone twice uh, yesterday, went once this morning. The morning practices are kind of non-contact, almost trying to game like cutting and kind of going back over some different things that we haven't practiced with our team in a while. And uh, we'll go this afternoon and uh, then obviously twice tomorrow and get ready for Jackson State on Thursday. But good to be back in the gym and uh, a little rough around the edges, but guys have had good spirit and I know they're anxious to play. Ben starts off. Herman, it had been 21 days since you'd actually gotten to coach the guys through practice, and you mentioned it a little rough around the edges, but um, how rough was it? Did they a little better <laughs> maybe than you expected, or was it about what you thought? Well, you know what happened, Ben, last week. Sometimes, you know, you get what you wish for, okay? So sometimes it's not great. And so I said, guys, so I went to our medical staff, and I said, I think I should be able to work our team out, you know, individually. And they, they said, hey, Coach, we, we, we think you can do that. You had it. That'd be great. And so – Yes, yeah, so I felt like I was back in doing Dixie basketball camp back in the south. You know, I was going from 7 to 10. So I was doing like 9 or 10 individual workouts from Tuesday all the way to, to uh, Sunday and uh, 45 minutes apiece. So at least that was good that, that I got my hands on them. It was just me and the player, you know. And so it was just we were just doing some individual cutting and skill development. So that was great just to kind of get their, their legs back under them. And I hadn't really seen them in a long time. So it was great for me to spend some time with them. And, uh, but they really did. They, they, were, they, they did fine yesterday. Their effort was really good. Uh, they were competitive. You know, as you try to get your team back going, we have to be cognizant of the fact of not trying to do too much, you know, and then uh, – because everybody knows we're going to have to play ourselves into game shape. It's going to take us a week probably to do that. Go to Joe. Yeah, Coach, I was interested to see uh, how the talks you, you guys had with JSU once the uh, tournament was postponed. And how did you guys just still work it out to where, you know, you guys can still play at least in the month of December and still have it as part of your non-conference program? Yeah, um, and you know, and you know, and Wayne's team has had to pause, and they open up tonight. You know, obviously with uh, uh, with Mississippi State, and so we, we tried to get back on the phone with two schools. You know, Central Arkansas, and then and Jackson State, and Thomas Gray, our, our director of basketball, had a lot of conversations with Jackson State, and we really wanted that game to happen. I know Jackson State did too, and uh, so uh, they we just kind of worked the schedule out. Uh, it was good that Jackson State could do it, and uh, and we'll look forward to playing them, and and we'll watch them tonight on the SEC Network. And a quick follow up to that, I think what's the dynamic like of you guys haven't played yet? You guys hit the floor Thursday. You taking a team that's kind of going to get their jitters out <laughs> in a sense tonight? Yeah, you know, I think we'll probably see that a lot. Well, I guess we'll be the last Power Five team to play uh, Thursday because Tennessee is going to play tonight, and. Uh, you know, because we could have opened up on the 25th. And, uh, you know, it just is what it is. I told our team, I said, guys, not one person in college basketball is going to feel sorry for anybody. We're not going to be any kind of excuse-making mode. We, we know exactly where we're at. COVID just attacks people in a lot of different ways, whether it's the virus and I have a mild case or somebody that really, really struggles with a tough case. And it's just, it's just so many different scenarios. So we're just going to go out and play and, and just control what we can control and, and look forward to playing a, a really good Jackson State team who I think can uh, have a great chance to win the SWAC this year. Go to John. Hey, Kermit. Um, first, uh, you, you mentioned you had a mild case, and that was obviously what was reported. Um, can you kind of take me through briefly, like, your, your symptoms, like how, how kind of bad did it hit you and how are you feeling now? Yeah, and I appreciate that, John. You know, kind of the day that we tested after practice, I, I felt a little – I just felt different. I, I had aches in places I'd never ached. I don't know, I just – just driving home, something was different. And I told my wife, I said, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I tested positive. You know, we got our test back the next day at, at 6 a.m. or 6.30. And just just aches and kind of chills, never any fever. I started breathing treatments right off the bat, just for preventive. I never had any problems with it. I uh, went on all the different types of medications. And uh, really, for about after about the fourth day, I was fine. It takes a little bit to get your, your stamina back, maybe fully. But I, I'm, I'm full go. And uh, like I said, I was in the gym all week last week, just individually with our guys. And uh, so... Uh, I really was. I was. I hate I was away from my team, but you know, in kind of the big picture, I was very lucky. And um, you mentioned that 
you know, you guys will be the last Power Five team playing. Um, how much do you think, like, you guys are set back? Like, will time tell? You mentioned that practice was a little rough around the edges, but yeah, how much do you think you guys are like uh, set back from that? Well, you know, I mean, just to and like I said, guys, I'm not going keep repeating this during our process of the next two weeks of playing, but you know, 21 days for me not coaching our team is 21 days. And it's this time of the year when you're trying to open up, you know, you're trying to play. And so there's a lot of different things where we're gonna try to, to go through. And, uh, and then on top of that, for really about 14 days, we're almost in a pause. They got to work out a little bit individually. Uh, so you're dealing, you know, with conditioning and you're, you're dealing with just basketball. You know, yesterday we turned it over probably more than we, we have, didn't shoot it as well, and it wasn't for lack of effort. I think that's just going to happen. And, uh, but, but I tell you what they did, like I said, their energy levels were really good. They're just excited to play, and that's the biggest thing. I'm excited for them that they get to play a game. Knock on wood that everybody is, is good on both teams on Thursday, and uh, they've worked extremely hard, and they deserve a chance to start playing right now. Nick, go ahead. First off, Kermit, just glad to hear you made it through and you're feeling better, but just from your perspective, how did you handle isolation, both as a team when you guys were trying to work together and just you kind of getting stir crazy in the house for a few days? Well, Betty and Allie were affected more than I was. God dang, they were so glad I was leaving. I was, uh, I, I don't recommend watching Zoom practices from home because I was upstairs in the upstairs bedroom and I was hollering at the Zoom. I had my cell phone. And I had Connor Walsh, who's on my staff, and I'd, I'd call Connor. I'd say, get Jarkel over here right now. Get Devontae over right now. And so my wife, finally, I hear her hollering up the stairs, would you please turn it off? Turn it off. You know, so I think she thought I was going to jump out the window. So that was just – it was kind of frustrating kind of being out of control uh, of the situation. Uh, the isolation, 10 days just seems like a long time, you know, when you're up there and you're and you're away from people. You know, you just want to see people. You want to touch your team and see your staff. And uh, so, but but it was fine. I mean, like I said, I know Allie and Betty are glad I'm, I'm out and going to work. And, uh, uh, but but I appreciate that, but I do. I, I feel great. My energy level's great. And uh, looking forward to Thursday. Go to Parrish. Hey, Kermit, uh, after the layoff and getting started late, you have three games in five days. Uh, physically, uh, just how do, you th how do you feel that will be for your team? Yeah, you know, I, I really think, Parrish, that we need to play. I do. Or are we – you know, I've, I've always said it. I hope – and we'll find out. But I do think the strength of our team is going to be depth, where we can put 10 or 11 guys in a game. And I think we're going to need that early on. I mean, if guys really trying to play effectively and really hard – uh, it's not going to be for long, long periods of time early on. And so hopefully, you know, the depth of play and, you know, that, that Thursday, Saturday, Monday, and then Wednesday and then Saturday again, you know. But, but I, I do think – I don't think you could do it any other way, Parrish. We just – we had to fit these games in a, in a tight window and our guys just need to play. But we are. We're just going to play through some things kind of on the run and that's just where it is. But you know what? Other, other college teams are doing that as well. Uh, obviously, you guys work to make this a better rebounding team. What's the rebounding uh, mentality among your guards? Yeah, we know. In fact, we we're just talking about that in our staff meeting today. Devontae Shuler and Jarkel are both good rebounding point guards. Uh, Austin Crowley led us in rebounding yesterday with seven. Luis Rod Rodriguez has been probably in our top two all preseason. So we do think we have some competitive rebounding guards. We think Matthew Morrell can be a tremendous rebounder. He doesn't stick his nose in the middle of it, as some young guys don't do as much now, you know, because of he's so athletic and so strong. And uh, where I think we've got to get better, Parrish has been a better offensive rebounding team. I think we're a really good defensive rebounding team, but Romello White, Hadeem C, KJ, those guys, I mean, going back, especially in these early games, taking advantage of our size and, and offensive rebounds. And when you offensive rebound the ball, other teams foul you, you know, so foul trouble uh, accumulates. That's something we've got to do better. Back to Ben. Herbert, you've talked about how in a season that will contain so many unknowns, you have to have guys that are flexible, versatile. Luis playing the four was one of those moves that you made before the shutdown. How did he look there? Did he look out of place or did he actually take to it pretty good? Yeah, he, he, was, he was good, Ben. I think the biggest thing, and it could happen in the SEC too, but you start playing Jackson State, North Carolina, Wilmington, Central Arkansas, 
Uh, peep, they're four men or three men. You know, they'll play these active six five, six six guys that are really good guards. They'll play them at the four. So you really try to use it uh, defensively. I wish we could have taken a longer look at it, Ben, and we kind of got shut down, you know. But even yesterday and this morning we did some uh, at the four, and it would mainly be because of defending uh, a smaller four-guard lineup. And uh, but, but he's adjusted well. Neil, go ahead. Hey, Carmen, I was asking about Luis as well. Um, he obviously had a difficult year last year. He was talking about how anxious he is to get back on the court. It's felt like it's been more than a year, that kind of thing. Just for you personally, I know that he's one of those guys that you've always enjoyed coaching. How happy would you be for him that he's finally back out there? Yeah, and Luis is I, – I, I really don't. I couldn't tell you starters, but I know one starter and there are really a couple of them. And Luis will, will start the game on, on Thursday night. He just – he deserves it. Uh, he's been so consistent. He's been physical. Uh, you know, just kind of what he did last year. He's been one of our best rebounders. He just he just embraces coaching. He never flinches. He's a great student. He's just where he's supposed to be. He's just one of those guys you enjoy coming to the gym with uh, every single day. I wish he was a little more outspoken and verbal on the floor. Uh, but he's got great toughness, and uh, I really do think he's going to have a really good year. He said he, he felt like he – you know, learned a little bit about the mental part of the game last year when he was forced to watch because he couldn't physically play. Have you seen that? Um, I have. On the court? Yep, I have. I, I think he's become a lot better in tune of watching film. Uh, I think he's, you know, like even when he was playing the four, his adjustment mentally was, was good playing uh, the four. I think he's gotten much better skill level off of ball screens, his assist to turnover. He leads us in our team with assist to turnovers. And, uh, you know, and coming back off layovers, you worry about turnovers and not taking care of the ball and knock on wood. He's been really, really safe with the ball. And he's one of those guys, Neil, he's a, he's a ball mover. And those guys are just invaluable. Guys, they can just catch it and just move the ball. He doesn't have to make a home run play. And uh, so he, uh, he has a lot of, of good value in how he plays for us. Back to John. Kermit, how do you kind of plan to use Domencio um, and, and what kind of role do you see him playing on the, in the offense and how has he kind of progressed? Yeah, you know, Domencio is, one, again, one of, one of our very best rebounders. And uh, he's probably second or third on our team. Uh, he, he's usually in the top in deflections every single day, so he's active. Uh, he's like a lot of some new guys with us. He's an older player, but getting adjusted just to, you know, the different things we're doing offensively and, and schematically, defensively. Uh, but he's competitive. He's going to play a bunch for us. Uh, I see him playing mostly at the three. He could even be one of those guys that go to a, you know, kind of a, a four man. And uh, but you'll see his activity level. He's got a great voice in the gym. You hear him all the time, and uh, he'll be a big part of our team. Joe, go ahead. Yeah, coach. I was curious when uh, when you got your positive test and you guys tap uh, Ronnie Hamilton to kind of take over in your step. Did y'all already have kind of like contingency plans in place going into the season? Was that was your positive test kind of your positive test kind of like the first test for that? Yeah, you know, I was asked that question before. We had not really talked in my mind. I knew exactly, you know, what would do. I really, I really hadn't talked to it uh, to our staff in depth about if, if I go out. But it, I had a plan in, in my mind of what would happen. Number one, I got three or I got a lot of really good assistant coaches. Uh, Ronnie has been with me, and uh, and I just we renamed him interim coach. But Levi and, and Wynn and Thomas Gray would all have huge parts, you know, on the staff, and uh, you know, and they did a really good job in in, in practice, and our players responded, uh, and then we had a couple players test positive. And then another one was socially traced, and we're still we're full board ahead. We're just going to play. I think Sean Robinson had a concussion. We were down to maybe eight scholarship guys, and but we're going to go play the tournament. But then Ronnie started feeling bad, and and started feeling you know those symptoms. So he didn't practice the team on Sunday before we we're going to open that Wednesday, and then on Monday he tested positive. And that was kind of the one that kind of put us over the hump that they thought they had to shut us down and, you know, for the two-week period. So I hate it for Ronnie and our staff. Those guys would have done a great job, you know, without me for sure. 
And lastly, for me, I guess as a coach, how are you kind of guarding against all the emotions of that first game? Not for yourself and your coaching staff, but the players, because everybody's got that pent up energy and ready to go. Yeah, I, I know they're going to be so excited. They've watched so much basketball. And you know what? It, it'll, I'll get that same feeling in my stomach. I, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And it, it, it's a great, you can't explain it. I mean, it's just a different feeling. Uh, you, it's a real nervous feeling. I don't care how many games that you've coached. It's just game day, so I know on Thursday it'll hit us. I can kind of start feeling it now. But I can just see the excitement in our guys and, and that they're looking forward just to playing in games and, uh, you know, just to let them know it's game week. Now they got two more days before their first official game, and they can't wait to play.